people and planet and particularly profits are almost I suppose you can't say three sides of the same coin but it has some kind of concomitant relationship in how we unpack the people issues many people in Africa are rural Africa itself is underdeveloped new African businesses are bringing electricity bringing roads bringing health services bringing with their profits obviously uh, using that for good and to change the lives of, of many people. Profit then in, is intrinsically linked to making all of these things work because you can't do this just as a charity. And people in Africa are not asking for aid. They're asking for profits which is made from their, their country to be ploughed back into the necessary components to make it sustain itself. Instead of taking the resource and sending it to another country and it comes back as a finished product. So Africa, within the new economic framework, has undergone tremendous change. And of course, it has to do with the multi-party democracy or the winds of change that are blowing through Africa. And the UN, you know, you know, three cheers must go out to them. They're forcing companies to behave in a certain way. Established in 1940, the Industrial Development Corporation is a national development finance institution set up to promote economic growth and industrial development. It's owned by the South African government under the supervision of the Economic Development Department. The IDC's objectives are to contribute to the creation of balanced, sustainable economic growth in South Africa and on the rest of the continent. It makes funds available to industries or companies with plans to increase their competitiveness whilst engaging in sustainable business practices. We're here near the small town of Atavi in the northern part of Namibia to visit a newly founded company who is supported by an industrial loan from the IDC. They are the sole cement producer in the country and by far the largest employer in the region. This was a greenfield plant. Here was nothing. We only had bush. There was not even a road, there was not electricity. We started in 2009 and Trink, through their expertise, did various uh, investigations and also a very detailed environmental impact assessment study. IDC has a 20% stakeholding in Ohorongo Cement and certainly institutions, especially the IDC, for us are very important that has a long-term investment philosophy of building new industries in the region. From the raw material until the final product, everything comes out of the country. And I think that is very unique about Ohorongo. We have limestone, shale, marl, iron ore and gypsum. The advantages of producing locally are multiple. First of all, we are getting less dependent on imports. We are now locally manufacturing for the local market, plus also exporting to some of the neighboring countries. And not only the direct job creation, but also the indirect job creation through outsourcing opportunities, through procurement opportunities, not importing, for example, protective clothing from overseas, but producing it locally, and also job creation through downstream activities. So these are in very short, certainly very important advantages not only for Orongo, but also for the economy at large for Namibia. In order to achieve the right quality of cement, you must follow certain process steps. Only to mention some of them, you must crush the raw materials, you must grind them, you must burn them to clinker, and you must grind the clinker to get cement. Orongo Cement is the most CO2 efficient cement producer in the world. The drives at the plant are highly efficient and are managed by variable speed control systems to keep energy consumption to a minimum. Filters and compressed air systems are centrally controlled and the cement moles, which are the plant's highest energy consumers, are only run during the night to relieve the Namibian power grid during peak consumption. On the thermal energy side, the kiln employs the latest technology, which reuses most of the heat from the gases to dry raw material and coal before releasing it back into the environment. Water is another very important aspect in terms of environmental impacts. We are not using water for cooling purposes here on site. We are using air. We are squeezing the hot gases with ambient air. That saves every day up to 220 cubic meters of fresh water. The cement plant you see is currently running on maximum capacity. You don't see coming out anywhere dust. The reason, the background is that we have more than 40 backhouse filters installed all over the plant. At any point where we charge material to another process step, we are de-dusting this change over. And therefore we can run the plant 
with a very little dust emissions which are far below 5 milligrams per million cubic meters. Tell us about your connection with Energy for Future. Energy for Future is one reason for our high efficiency on the thermal energy side. We are replacing fossil fuels, currently coal, with wood chips from our sister company Energy for Future. The Bush to Fuel project is about cutting encroacher bushes which has taken over the savannas here in Namibia. In total 26 million hectares are bush encroached. That's similar the size of the United Kingdom, so it's a very big area we are talking about. And we are cutting these bushes selectively, meaning we are leaving out all uh, protected species that are protected under the Forest Act, plus we are leaving all trees and plants above four meters since they are providing shade for game and cattle. So we are increasing biodiversity. We are opening up the farm. Uh, grass will recently grow here again so the farmer can stock more cattle and more game. All in all, it's a big benefit not only for the environment, also for the farmer. Orongo Cement is using these wood chips to substitute the coal, so we are reducing fossil CO2 emissions in total about 130,000 tons of fossil CO2 per year with that uh, wood. Last but not least, also Namibia is benefiting because we can use, we can utilize here an own energy source. How does a small town like Otavi benefit from housing a major international industry? It has put Otavi on the map, especially with the central government. As a small town, to host a major industry like Orongo Cement. In the first instance, uh, we benefit from our people getting the jobs. And as a municipality, we benefit from those people paying for their rents, rates and taxes. The motto of the Orongo Trust is together we will grow from a village to a town. The trust was started during the early phases of the plant's construction and is based on three pillars of engagement, sports and education, healthcare and infrastructure. With the support of a German NGO, the Trust's first project involved the upgrade and provision of equipment to Otavi's medical clinic. Additional medical equipment to the value of 2.3 million Namibian dollars was also donated to the National Ministry of Health for use in other Namibian hospitals. Can you give me some examples of contributions the Trust has already made in your town? The Trust have contributed towards the renovation of the state clinic. Secondly, the Orongo Trust has contributed towards the solar panels at one of the hostels here in town. And thirdly, it has also contributed towards renovating our sports facilities. One of the IDC's key objectives is the development of Africa through support of sustainable projects with significant development impact. As an extension of the socio-economic role, investment in ventures like Orongo Cement include an increasing emphasis on environmental sustainability as part of the core business strategy. Following this trend, the IDC launched the Green Energy Efficiency Fund in 2011. The GIF is a 500 million rand fund which seeks to promote energy efficiency and self-use renewable energy projects, primarily within the energy-intensive industrial sectors in Southern Africa. The energy savings achieved will facilitate the full cost of the loan. This fund forms part of a larger plan to disperse some 25 billion rand in support of green economic development over the next five years. 20% of this fund has already been allocated to projects ranging from textiles and food processing to solar panels and biogas production. Thanks for being with us on It's Africa's Time. Please join us next month as we look at companies acting as agents of change across the continent.